Hello, coaches. Welcome back to another episode of Coach Better Spotlight. My name is Kim Cafino, and I'm here to help you coach better. After decades as a teacher and a coach in international schools, I founded my company, Eduro Learning, to help you embrace your inner leader and make a bigger impact in your school setting as a teacher, a coach, or a leader. I work with clients around the world through our certificate programs and private mentoring packages. And today's episode is inspired by some of those powerful conversations. If you have a topic you'd like to hear us talk about or a guest you'd like to see on the podcast, please leave a comment below or join our Coach Better Facebook group or find us on social media at Eduro Learning. Today, Clint and I are chatting with Becky Green, Associate Director of Professional Learning at Global Online Academy. This spotlight focuses on what excellence in remote professional learning looks like. In the full-length episode, we also chat about why it's essential to engage in online learning as educators, how we can create and design learning for equity using technology, and how we can better support teachers and leaders in creating equitable classrooms. To listen to the full episode, subscribe to Coach Better wherever you get your podcasts. All of the elements that Becky describes in this conversation are part of what makes learning with Aduro and GOA so special. These are not your typical online learning experiences or face-to-face learning quickly brought online due to the pandemic. Our certificate programs, The Coach, Women Who Lead, and Cotail were designed with the intention of bringing the best that online learning has to offer with the learner and the community at the heart of the experience. We only open registration for our certificate programs once a year, so we can build these learner-centered communities that make a direct impact on teaching and learning in your school setting. If you're curious about The Coach, Women Who Lead, or the Certificate of Educational Technology and Information Literacy, Cotail, find all the details at edurolearning.com. about your title, Associate Director of Professional Learning, that leads me to believe that you work with the teachers at GOA in their professional growth. Can you tell us about what that looks like? And then I want to dig into what does excellent, and I'm assuming this is all remote, remote professional learning look like? Because just like you were saying that there, when the pandemic started, schools were on the back foot because they didn't have a framework, they didn't have a checklist, they didn't have a foundation. I think the same goes for remote professional learning. Like I don't think that mm-hmm. most places, I will say my organization, Eduro aside, because we do have a framework and I'm sure GOA, you're going to tell us about it right now. There are only a few places that have built remote professional learning from the very beginning. Like it was intended to be remote. We see many organizations now transitioning to remote professional learning because that's the only option they've had for the last three years. But it's very different when you take whatever you did face-to-face and you make it remote versus you started designing it intentionally for remote learning. Mm. So my questions are first, tell us a little bit about your, your actual job. So we have a framework for that. And then tell us how do you design that excellent remote professional learning? Hmm. That's a great question. And I think it's one where like everything is, is shifting, it's shifting in response to what's happening in the world. Um, so my role actually is mostly working with our member schools and with, um, other schools around the world that choose to participate in our professional learning. So we have, uh, our student program where I do get a chance to work with those teachers and to support some of what they're doing. And then we also have our professional learning program where, Schools that participate in both our student program or any educator that wants to can sign up for one of our offerings and that ranges everything from workshops to more intensive institutes to courses and it's it's evolving in response to what educators need. And I think, I think 
what we what works in in-person professional learning, there are elements of that that are absolutely absolutely translate. So thinking about how can we move from theory to practice really quickly? Teacher time is precious. It's there. It's the most important resource that they have. How can we ensure that it's job embedded and that whatever people are getting to experience, they're getting to put into practice and it has an impact for students. And so for us, I think in our courses, originally that was really focusing on things like really well curated resources. How are we offering, how are we doing the lifting for teachers? How are we lessening the cognitive load in whatever ways we can, creating an experience that's easy to navigate? And that I think excellent professional learning needs to model what we want students to experience too. So you're having this very meta experience of whatever you're involved in, you can then take back to your classroom as well. But when you look at the playlist or the pacing guides or whatever it is in the design, you can borrow that. We get to work with really wise instructional designers at GOA and we all get to dabble in that ourselves. And just, I think the value of what that, what that prioritization of good design does is it has us thinking about access. And it has us thinking about what are the different ways that people can easily log into a space and get started right away without having to figure out the technology, without, without even having to think about the fact that they're in an LMS. How do we make that easy? And I think this is something that, you know, for me, we need to harness what's special about online, which is we get to be a part of a global networked community. We get to connect with educators from around the world who are trying different things. And so how can professional learning really harness those voices and elevate the work of the people doing the work? How can we more and more, I want teacher work to be visible. I want to see what educators are doing and I want them to be telling the stories to other educators. And so I think one of the shifts, especially as so many people have felt isolated during the pandemic and educators have spent so many time on a laptop is the challenge I think with online learning now is thinking about how can we offer really action-based practical experiences that are highly relational, that are building those cohorts and those communities and those places to ask the questions and to really connect. And that's, that's an investment of time as well. Like just, just as taking a self-paced course is an investment of time. There's also some emotional capital in connecting with others. But I think, I think that, I think the cohort experience is something that will become more and more powerful. Okay, so I have to go on a small slide, slight tangent here, which is directly related to what you say, but love everything that you said there, because that is exactly like, just like you say, when you're building intentionally with remote experiences or online experiences in mind, you have to, or you have the benefit or pleasure or um, advantage of taking in that unique thing, which is getting connected globally. And talking about the shifts or challenge that you're seeing now is that um, building cohorts and communities, that is exactly what I see with the programs that I run. I, I know that you know about Coattail and I run another program for coaches and another program for aspiring female leaders. And in all three of them, the like core of the program is the global cohort. It's the personal connections between the people, you know, starting and being together for a period of time, feeling like you're building a community, you're connecting with these people that you have beyond just the scope of the course. And I'm, I'm really glad that you raised that because I think sometimes that's kind of hard to articulate the value of that, the value of community and online spaces, because we're so used to it being two things, either self-paced or teacher directed for lack of a better word. Like you come to this course at my time and you listen to me and maybe you get to ask a question and that's what happens in like online learning as we know it. But when you're building these really relational environments, these really community driven environments, which sounds like it's what's happening at GOA, and I know it's what's happening, I can speak for my programs, I know what's happening in my programs, you build this interconnected network of people on a global scale, that is, it is that personal piece that takes away the screen, like the frustration of being behind a screen, the like constant screen time. And so I, I really, that just really resonated with me. Yes. It, it humanizes the experience. And, and I think that's interesting what you say about like, how do you, how do you share the value of that? 
because the people that, that take the risk and do it, they immediately become advocates and you've got, you have people, yeah, who are definitely promoting that on your side, but it's, it's hard. I think there, I think there is the challenge of showing how does that have direct value? And I keep thinking about how, when you're doing meaningful work with some, like in my classroom, when my students are doing something they are really excited about, their relationships are growing. Like that just happens at work, right? Who you're doing your meaningful work with, you start to connect and you grow. And so how can we also focus then that professional learning and those cohort conversations on the work? Like how can we elevate the work people are doing and create true communities of feedback and model those authentic collaborative processes that we hope for our students between adults? Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you enjoyed the conversation today, please head over to eduralearning.com to find out about all of our professional learning opportunities, including our certificate programs, The Coach, Women Who Lead, and the Certificate of Educational Technology and Information Literacy, COTAIL, as well as our private mentoring packages. At Eduro Learning, teachers become leaders. Whatever your role in schools, you are so much more than just a teacher. As an educator, you have built an amazing skill set that goes far beyond the classroom, and you deserve professional learning that does more than just tick a box. It's time to end that cycle of one size fits all, barely there, a minimum PD, and get professional learning that's customized just for you. Today's episode highlighted so many of the ways that our professional learning online is so unique and so purposefully designed to keep the learner, you, at the heart of the experience. Join us for one of our annual global cohorts of The Coach, Women Who Lead, or Cotail to see how our community-driven, personalized certificate programs will help you build the confidence to embrace your inner leader and make a bigger impact in your school setting. You deserve to be at the heart of your professional learning experiences. If you prefer to get started with something right now, we've also got self-paced courses where you can earn recertification credits, private mentoring packages we can customize just for you, and downloadable workbooks you can jump into right away. Find it all at eduralearning.com. Plus, join our Coach Better Facebook group and connect with us on social media at Eduro Learning for more great resources at the intersection of technology, coaching, and leadership. I love to hear from you, no matter where you are in your professional journey, to see how I can help you move forward. Send me a DM and let's start a conversation. See you next time.